Welcome back to the history of cryptography behind the code. I'm your host, Michael Strake. Let's get started. In the last episodes, we discussed various cryptographic ciphers that were used throughout history. We concluded with the invention of the Enigma machine, so let's recap for just a moment. The year is 1918, and the world is celebrating the end of World War I, which claimed an estimated 10 to 20 million lives. Unbeknownst to the rest of the world, as the macroscopic war of the worlds was just ending, a microscopic war was just beginning. And so that same year, the Spanish flu, made up of microscopic amounts of nucleic acid and proteins, would eventually claim even more lives than all of the gunpowder used in World War I. And we can't end our description of 1918 without reliving version 2 of the pop culture hit song called Tiger Rag by the original Dixie Ann Jazz Band. Let's listen in for just a moment to help set the metaphorical stage so we can fully embrace the sentiment of 1918. <laughs> I'm sure we all remember that one. 1918 was also the first generation Enigma machine. This contraption, a brainchild of the German engineer Arthur Scherbius, was actually initially designed for commercial use. Little did Scherbius know that his invention would soon become a centerpiece in a global conflict. But before we get ahead of ourselves, before we dive into the world of Alan Turing, we must tip our hats to another key player in this saga, Marian Rajewski. Rajewski and his bros at the Cypher Bureau were the first successful code breakers of an early generation Enigma machine. These little guys had three rotors that could be adjusted to encrypt any message. Rajewski and his team developed a device known as the Bomba and were able to start decoding messages as early as Christmas 1932. And so we enter 1939. Alan Turing and his team at Bletchley Park begin their work cracking the next generation Enigma machine, only to find that the Germans had given it the modern equivalent of an extreme makeover. The Enigma machine now sported additional rotors and other hardware upgrades under the previous models. So Turing and his team responded by developing the Bombe, as opposed to the earlier Bomba, machine. It was an electromechanical device capable of checking thousands of potential Enigma machine settings to identify the correct setting for each day. This was a game changer in the effort to crack the Enigma codes and played a significant role in the Allied war effort. They knew that the Germans believed that their cipher to be unbreakable. And it turns out that some of this overconfidence was their Achilles heel. Now let's take a moment to appreciate the Bombay machine. Its technical datasheet may read a bit different from today's modern machines, but at the time, this was state of the art. Electrical relays. These were the brawn behind its computational power, acting as switches to manipulate electrical currents for various calculations. Next, rotary drums. Also known as the bomb wheels, these drums contain replicated versions of the Enigma machine settings and were used to simulate the rotor configurations of the actual Enigma devices. Poles and contacts. The Bombay's drums were equipped with poles and contacts that corresponded to the electrical pathways found in the Enigma machine. It was like having a cheat sheet for the complex rotor interactions of the Enigma. Permutational testing. Like Windows 3.1, the Bombay was a master of multitasking, systematically testing different combinations of rotor positions. It exploited the patterns and characteristics of German military message formats to eliminate unlikely settings, significantly reducing the computational load required to decode the message. The machine featured an indicator panel that displayed potential rotor settings and their corresponding indicators. This visual feedback allowed the operators to track the progress of the decryption process and make adjustments as needed. In addition, we have parallelism. To expedite the decryption process, the Bombay employed parallelism, meaning multiple instances of the Enigma machine were running simultaneously. It was like having multiple detectives working on the same case at the same time. Next, we also have wiring and switching. The Bombay employed intricate wiring and switching mechanisms to replicate the complex electrical connections and substitutions performed by the Enigma machine during encryption. This painstaking replication was crucial in deciphering the encoded messages. So there you have it. From the Bomba to Alan Turing's invention, the Bombay machine, it was ready to take on the Enigma. Like David standing before Goliath, only this time David had a supercomputer instead of a sling. So let us move forward to 1941. The United States has been reluctantly brought into World War II chaos and the Soviets are kicking some serious Nazi access in the Battle of Moscow. The codebreakers at Bletchley Park have a triumph of their own and finally crack German Air Force's Enigma communications with their Bombay machine. This is an amazing triumph for the war. 
However, shortly after, the Germans begin changing their operational procedures, including the way that they choose the daily settings and the frequency at which they choose them, almost as if they knew that something was up. They also introduce more complex versions of the Enigma machine for different branches of the military, each with its own set of codes and settings. It was a bit like trying to crack a different language for each branch of the military. Another noteworthy event, in 1943, the Allies intercepted a message known as the Fish that detailed German military plans for the Battle of Kursk. This intelligence allowed the Soviet Union to prepare a successful defense, leading to a decisive victory against the German forces. As the war progressed, the code-breaking efforts became increasingly collaborative. The British worked closely with their American counterparts, forming an exceptional alliance known as Team Ultra. The decryption of Enigma continued to provide vital intelligence throughout the war. The Allies were now able to anticipate German naval movements, counter U-boat attacks, and strategically plan their military operations. The cryptographers at Bletchley Park made an immense impact on the outcome of World War II, saving countless lives and helping shape the course of history. As World War II ended, the Enigma machine was eventually retired, its legacy enduring as a testament to the indomitable spirit of human intelligence in the face of great adversity. The March of Progress ushered in new encryption methods, pushing the Enigma into the shadows of history. Later in life, Turing hypothesized that the human brain functions akin to a digital computing machine. He further postulated that the human cortex in its initial state is an unstructured machine, but can attain organization and transform into a universal machine through training and enough information. His reasoning led to a thought experiment called the Turing test, in which a human tries to determine if he or she is talking to a machine or another human, not unlike a lot of the chat GPT and AI things that are going on today. In our forthcoming episode, we're set to journey to the captivating realm of post-World War II cryptography. We'll be uncovering how the evolution of modern ciphers has not just influenced the course of history, but also left a profound imprint on the fabric of human society and have even helped drive changes to our DNA. These Cryptographic advancements have played a pivotal role in shaping the past, driving our present, and thus creating our future. So stay tuned for an enlightening exploration into the world of post-World War II codes and ciphers.